Welcome by Fight Decide Special. My name is Hassan Akbisum. When I was 70 years old, I had my first fight. After that, I had more than 44 fights. A lot of wins, but a few losses. People ask me when I mention this, Hassan, did you make some money of fighting? To be honest, no, there is no money in fighting in Holland. But one thing for sure, I saw, I traveled a lot of nice places. And one thing else, I met a lot of special people. And one of them you're going to meet today. I had a great interview with the great Joe Galzaghi, the Wales man, the undefeated and one of the greatest British fighters ever. Check the interview. Oh, nice. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. No, not too bad, my friend. Um, yeah, I, nice top. I see the ringside, man. Yeah, Dave. yeah, yeah. <laughs> David, David told me, listen, if you sit with, if you sit with Joe, make sure you, you, you mention ringside. So, people, this is ringside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yeah. talk, man. No, um, how was the family first with this funny situation with the corona? Everything all right? Yeah, obviously, uh, my boys are okay. You know, obviously, I lost my mum and dad over the last two years, so it's yeah. been a tough couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Sure you no, know, obviously, my dad was my trainer, Enzo. Um, yeah, so it's been tough, but yeah, it's it's a pain. You know, we're still in lockdown in Wales, and I'm hoping it's going to be um, you know finished soon. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, let me call your list. It's, your list is incredible. It's WBC, WBO, WBA, IBO, Ring Magazine, Lineal Super Middleweight Champion, Ring Light Heavyweight Title, and Hall of Fame. Um, it's an amazing list. Um, uh, it's an honor to speak to you. Uh, yeah, met, let's just speak to you. We met each other like, I think, six years ago. I don't think you remember. Uh, it was in Wembley Stadium, I think. Enzo was fighting there against, I don't know, against who, but he was fighting there in Wembley. Um, Wembley? Yeah, I will send you a picture of it. I still have it. Okay, man. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, I was quite ne a little bit nervous for this interview, to be honest, because uh, uh, I don't speak every day to a legend like you. Ah, it's you, bro. Sorry, man. Yeah, the last, last week we, ha we heard about the sad news about uh, Martha uh, Hegler. Um, I saw your Instagram. You, I mean, of course, you met him a few times. What kind of man was that? Yeah, you know, uh, but I'll tell you. So when I was started boxing um, as a nine-year-old, Marvin Marvin Hagler was my my favorite fighter. If you want to say a hero growing up, Sugar Ray Landed Marvin Hagler, and um, I loved Hagler being a southpaw as well. You know, he was just uh, uh, just a tremendous fighter, warrior, great chin. You know. Um, Probably my favorite fight growing up. You know, you, you remember certain fights when you're a kid. And I remember when uh, Hagler boxed Tommy Hearns in that three rounds. I remember going to school and yeah. just wishing Hagler to win, you know. And he just showed what, a, what an animal, what a warrior he was. As, 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 and as a person, I had the privilege of meeting him with my son in Las Vegas. I think it was about six years ago. Um, very, you know, just a lovely guy, you know, that's a, just, a, just a great human being, you know, great aura about him and, um, you know, laughing and joking and, you know, humble, yeah. which is a big thing, I think, for for many people who are not humble. Um, it's a big thing, especially being such a great champion. And, yeah, it's uh, something um, I always remember. And, um, you know, it's very, very sad he's passed away at such a young age. Made him too soon. He went too soon. Yeah. 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 Very sad. And um, I, um, I always said I'm, I'm I'm training a few guys right now, and um, I I did a few fights by myself, and I always have said that, um, and I've been criticized for this that somebody who trains, uh, especially fighters, in my eyes, he has to do it, but uh, he has to done it by himself. What I mean with that is like. Um, to be a good trainer, uh, you have to, yeah, you have to feel what it is to lose. You have to, to feel what it is to throw punches. Uh, how how was my fighter feeling around one, two, or three, or whatever? And I was be criticized for the fact that, yeah, you, how can you say that? Because some people are never fought, but made champions. And uh, may he rest in peace. Your father um, made Thank you, you made made. Uh, yeah, made you what the whole list I just said. How was he able to to make you as such a great fighter and uh, coming from the music business? Am right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> basically, my father, um, although he's a musician, 
he could box. He could box a bit because when he was in Sardinia, he was a very talented footballer. Uh, he could have turned professional. Uh, he, he was in the national service wow. and played with many Juventus players that went on to play in the 1970 World Cup. Wow. But my my nonno, my grandfather, basically said to him, you can't, uh, you can't play football no more. You have to be a musician. So he learned to play the bass, hence why he got into music. And he was more forced into music to, to, to play with his uncle, Vincenzo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> regarding the boxing, my grandfather was quite talented in the army. He went to war. He went to the Second World War at 15. He forged his signature to go to, to war. And uh, he was a prisoner of war in Spain for a few years. He came back. So my dad, as a young age, what I remember, my father, you know, he taught me the basis, the basis of boxing. You know, my dad could box. I used to spar with my dad. He had a great knowledge of boxes. Um, he had a great, uh, we used to, like I said, he'd spar with other pros in the ring. So he, he didn't go into boxing not having a clue. People mm-hmm. see, because he didn't have boxing fights, quote, he could box. Do you know what I mean? He learned as a kid. He got taught my granddad. Um, and uh, he took me to the boxing gym as a, as a nine-year-old. And so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I had a trainer called Paul Williams, um, who trained just amateur boxing. But my father trained me every single other day. So we 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 do pads, you know. We put back in them days, we had no pads, man. So we'd be, you know, uh, cushion, cushions from the settee, you know. We and I did the wall, you know. Um, I do sparring with my father, and. And you know what? He was a tremendous motivator. You know, he trained me like a professional from the age of 12, 13. I won my first uh, British uh, title at 13. Wow. And then, then I had my dream because I wanted to play football as well, but my, my, hands, yes, were much, yes, yes. my hands were much <laughs> faster than my feet, okay? So I started to, to, to love winning, you know? I, I won the national ABAs, it was 36 kilograms, which I think, you know, it's small. And that was my dream. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for my father, like I said, he was, you know, he he had a good knowledge of boxing, great knowledge of boxing, although he never boxed. And he knew me, he knew my style, he knew when out out to tick, you know, I'd we'd fall out, you know, when I'm a teenager, like all teenagers want to do things, you know, they want to go out this with their friends, but you know, he, he kept me motivated and um, yeah. And he made me believe and it's, it's like the power of belief, man. It's like, he believed in me. Yeah. yeah. He believed I was gonna be a world champion. So when I was 13, I believed in my heart. I had the faith I was gonna be a world champion because my father told me so many times and he believed it, you're gonna be a world champion one day. Wow. So if it wasn't for not just my father training me, motivating me, but also telling me that I'm going to be a world champion and having that belief always in me. And let's not forget that my father didn't just train me. We had three world champions yeah, no, yeah, yeah, at yeah. one time in a little little gym in yeah, in, a, in, a, in, a, in South Wales. You know, it's, uh, it's 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 never been done. You know, and um, yeah, you know, we miss him. He had, you know, he was just a just a special special person and yeah, that, that. that special energy about him. You know. And can, could you see, uh, was it easy for you to, to see your father as a father or to see him as a trainer? Well, that's it. That's it. I think, um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, at first, when you're young, obviously, you know, he's, he's your dad. Yeah. Right? So you see him all the time. And yes, we fell out, we fell out sometimes because I spent so much time together. We were like a married couple, you know, we's... <laughs> You know, see, morning, afternoon, he'd be pissed off one day, I'd be pissed <laughs> off another day. But the thing is, we, you know, and he's been a fiery Italian as well, and I'm also fiery. Yeah. But we always make up, and I always believed in him because if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't have started boxing. And when I had no money, things were tough. But we come to an understanding that when I was in the gym, we were, we were, boxer trainer yeah outside the gym as soon as we finished we'd have a cup of tea and we wouldn't talk boxing we talk family we'd be father and we you know father and son yeah and that's the reason i think that we could continue for as long as we did because we had that understanding and that chemistry amazing i was watching a documentary like two days ago i watched it twice and it was such an amazing uh the way he was speaking about you and uh, how he was speaking about your your mother was 
it was yeah it made me a little bit emotional it was amazing and uh yeah, yeah again you. may he rest in peace it was an amazing guy man yeah thank you very much i appreciate that he was i have um i have a few questions i call it the 12 round questions and okay it's up uh, and i want you to um some are funny some are serious and i want you to uh, answer the question uh yeah easy as possible See okay what we're gonna do all right the first one is pasta or fish and, or, or fish and chips Pasta, always, always <laughs> pasta. <you>, spaghetti vongole, <laughs> my favorite. Yeah. Uh, United Kingdom or United States? At the moment, UK. <laughs> All right. All right. This is going to be a tough one. United Kingdom of Italy? Uh, 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 Sardinia. Sardinia. That's where my dad's from. There's a lot more sun and better food and fresh fish. Yeah. All right. Beautiful beaches. Uh, football of UFC. Ah, football, culture. Juventus. Wow. Well, you, yeah, they're, they're doing well. No, they lost, didn't they? Ah, they lost the port, though. I'm still, yeah, yeah. I'm still pissed off at that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Ronaldo was doing his job. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Ah, I got to say Ronaldo. But that's there, two, two great. Two of the greatest players ever. So I say Ronaldo now because he plays for Juve. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, too. Uh, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Hmm. Uh, do you know what? I'd have to say Muhammad Ali. You know, he transcended boxing and he's just he was just an icon. Although also Mike Tyson is a, is a, an icon, but Muhammad Ali is the greatest. Yeah. AJ of Tyson Fury. Do you know what? I'd have to say AJ. Better boxer. I'll come back on that question. <laughs> uh, Canelo Alvarez or Billy Joe Saunders? Um, I think Alvarez is the favorite, but I think if Billy Joe Saunders can be, fights his best game, I think he has a style to make it very difficult for Canelo because he's a very good boxer. So I think he's got a good chance. People are writing him off completely, but I think, I think Billy Joe has a chance if he's at his best. All right. Floyd Mayweather of Manny Pacquiao as pound for pound better. So who's the better uh, pound for pound, Floyd or Manny Pacquiao? I don't, you have to say Floyd. He's got a zero. Right. He's undefeated. Okay. Undefeated, man. I'm going to come back on this question. Uh, pro boxing of amateur? Uh, pro. You get paid. <laughs> <laughs> a gold medalist of a WBC belt? Gold medalist in... Yeah, uh, 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 amateur boxing. Sorry. Well, I never had the chance to go to the Olympics. I should have went, but I didn't. But I got. I have to say, you know, WBC. All right, and the last one. It's my favorite. Who's going to win the fight between Andre Ward and Joe Galzaghi? I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, I, I say right. Andre Ward would be a tough fight. I think, to be honest, he's a very clever fighter, but. I think I'd find a way to beat him, definitely. All right, Joe. Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, uh, Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury. Um, you said AJ. I, to be honest. No, I, no, I said Joshua. I said uh, Tyson Fury. Oh, sorry. You said Fury. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, they saying now that the fight will be probably in the Middle East. Um, what do you think about that? Why not in England? I mean, it is the biggest fight in, I think, in since Mike Tyson Lewis, I think. Yeah, Why I think it's all down. It's all down to money and economics. I think you know because of the present climate with everything. It depends with this uh, with the virus. If you haven't got an audience here, and I think in the Middle East, you know, they you know, pay so much money. For them to fight there as a boxing fan of course i think the fight should be here i agree i, I don't agree with it being out there but it's all about money you know that they're going to get paid so much then they're going to go wherever the money is you know oh yeah all right yeah because i think um i've been, I've been i mean i've been once in wembley stadium and it was yeah it was when i met you but i think do you don't think there is uh, enough spares in, in Wales 
for this fight because I know they want the audience, but um, the English people are not able to travel. I mean, they're able to travel to, to Middle East. It's hard, yeah. But I mean, I think, I, I know the English. I mean, uh, they love to drink, but I, that's yeah. going to be <laughs> tough. Uh, that might be a problem. Yeah, that's going to be a problem there. So um, is it not better? Yeah, what you said is better for the boxing fans, but I mean, also money-wise for England, is it not better? Have the um, it, it's all dependent on you know whether you couldn't get fans in the stadium. Like Wembley Stadium would, would be ninety thousand fans. Even Las Vegas would be. I'm surprised that it wouldn't be in Las Vegas. Obviously, the crowd permitting, you know. Yeah. But um, it, you know, a rings a ring. You know, I think um, it's a great fight. I think it's uh, it's a super fight. I think you can make a case for both fighters to win. Both fighters can win this fight. I think you know Joshua. He's a big puncher. Um, I think he's he's probably still improving because he started boxing late on. But I just feel Tyson Fury with his height, his range. Yeah. And if he's at his best, if he's motivated at his best, he can punch. Plus, he, you know, he's schooled. Well, schooled. He's been boxing for many years. You know, he started boxing as a kid. And I think, um, I think that Joshua is one-dimensional sometimes. And I believe that, uh, like, uh, Fury just has more more skill he has a different something different about him you know he's very quick for a big guy he moves fast he's good Amazing, with his yeah. feet you know yeah. i'm thinking wait but you know it's one of them fights it's a pick and fight you know but I, i'd have to say i'd have to say fury wins that fight to be honest i'm very happy um that the fight that the two english uh, have all the world titles um i found um uh, the americans a little bit arrogant also, yeah. also the way they treat you because I don't think that you, uh, they give you the credit you deserve yeah. um, especially uh, the Hopkins fight well, we'll come that, I will come on that later um, so I'm really really happy two English fighters I see it as Europe so I still see it as Europe even if they yeah. are out of Europe but I'm still happy that they are English They're all the titles in Europe so no matter where it is I hope it is uh, it's able to see on television so I'm going to see it Then um, a little, uh, you said Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao. Um, who's, the, who's the better pound for pound fighter? You said Floyd, but um, I, I was always wondering how, where do you, how do you base pound for pound on? I mean, in, in my eyes, it's a resume. Um, yeah. Uh, and risk you took, and when do you fought against who? And in my eyes, Uh, and don't get me wrong, I think Floyd Mayweather is one of the best pure boxers I ever seen. But I think many Pacquiao took risk. Uh, he was lineal champion uh, as a flight weight and fought against the best in the prime. And I don't see Floyd, even if he is, again, the best pure boxer ever I've, I've seen. Uh, I don't think he deserves to be the pound for pound best, even if he has 15-0. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, and you can always make a case he lost a couple of fights. He was very fortunate, you know, I would say fortunate, I was close with De La Hoya, got yeah. tired on the stretch. You can make a, uh, you, you need, I, oh, I forgot the Mexican's name, he boxed, the tough guy. That we, I thought he lost that fight. Yeah, uh, 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 Castillo, not Castillo. Uh, uh, not Castillo, well, he, he boxed Castillo, what's his name? Uh, Twice, he boxed twice against. Yes, um, I forgot his name. Strong. Yeah. The anyway, first so one, he lost the first one and he won the second one clearly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you know, and if you look at, it's all about money with Floyd. If you look at his last, you know, the, the fight with the, you know, with, with um, I was saying the UFC guy, um, McGregor. McGregor, you know, they made so much money, but it was all, you know. It's all publicity and, and 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 everything else, but well, like I said, Manny Pacquiao, it's, it's hard to say. I'm only saying because he's got the zero. But at the end of the day, Manny Pacquiao is an absolute, you know, great legend. You know, he's uh, he's to manage to come up through maybe six, seven different weight categories and and win and still be active. You know, he's a you know he's a tremendous fighter. You know, but then you look at fights where he got knocked out against Marquez. Yeah, maybe that tarnished him slightly. Yeah. But I think when he was lighter. He was a better fighter as when he stepped up in weight, and you know I think I think May, May, Mayweather was very clever. You know he's a very good businessman. He knows where to fight an opponent. Yeah, yeah. And he waited and waited and waited. And Manny wasn't. I think Manny had an injury, 
I think uh, Manny was not, uh, he was definitely wasn't at his best when, mm -hmm. when they boxed. And that was a disappointment. That fight should have happened two, three years before and yeah. possibly would have seen a different outcome, you know? Yeah, that's true. And um, uh, just ask you, Andrew Ward against Joe Gazagi. I think you're going to win the fight because I think uh, really style make fights. And I don't think he was, you will be able to handle your pressure. But uh, like a few years ago, I think it was in 2009, there was a World Boxing Super Series in from Sauerland and Richard Shaver. Did they yeah. ever ask you to, to join the, the, the Super Six? No, unfortunately, I'd retired at the time, you know, and it's, it's, it's a shame because I would have loved that because I was WBO champion from 97 to 2006. I always wanted to fight unification fights to show I was the best. I beat six world champions or five former world champions when they just lost their title. So it wasn't until a Jeff Lacey fight when I had my first unification fight. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was fight the best. And Kessler, um, yes, yeah. he had the other belts. So then I, I basically won all five belts, you know. Uh, also the IBO, but I didn't want the IBO. I left that one there, right? So <laughs> <laughs> it would have been six. But yeah, the Super Series would have been fantastic. I think, I personally think that you know, politics run boxing. And it's a shame because there's too many world champions. People get confused. Yeah. But realistically, there's only one champion. You know, forget the organizations. There's only one champion. And I always wanted to be the number one. And at the end, after 10 years of being champion, I had all the bounce. So I've been yeah. approved. Yeah. I was the best. So I think they should do a super series in every weight division. That would help the boxers. Yeah but probably wouldn't help the promoters no, no, it's all money and the business you know. people. Yeah. yeah, you know, so unfortunately, that's that's the way it is. It's money again. And uh, you, money. You, uh, you, uh, I mentioned the Hall of Fame. How was it to stand there with uh, De La Hoya? I think Felix Tuni did that. Uh, it, was, it was, yeah, that's right, man. It's, uh, it was it was uh, one of the proudest moments of my life, obviously, with my dad. Yeah. There, and, uh, you know, you're so proud and um, to be first ballot, after five years is is good it's fantastic and, and what can i say to be inducted with two legends oscar Maybe. de la hoya and felix trinidad what a great class to go into wow. in 2014 yeah. so i felt very honored and humbled and uh yeah, it's, it was a beautiful beautiful time well you deserve it i mean your resume speak for themselves and um i was wondering uh how did I mean, everyone knows bernard hopkins tried to win the fight before the fight and he tries to he tried to bully you he tried to do stuff and then he, he said the 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 thing about uh i was very in shock you know when he said <laughs> yeah seriously because i i was quite a i was quite a fan of hopkins you know because <clears throat> i respected the way he came from and what he uh, all the trouble he had and then he made this 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 uh conversation against uh what he what, uh, what he said no, we had, I never let a white boy beat yeah, me. I never let a white boy beat me, yeah. And I was really in shock, you know. And I know um, that that stuff sells, but I never expected from him to say that. And when he said that, I said, wow, you know, I hope really uh, Joe Gazzaghi will beat that sh shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but how, 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 how did your father, the may he rest in peace, prepare you for, for this kind of... Uh, it was fine. Listen, at the end of the day, I, I'm good with, you know, I, I wanted that fight. I, I, I bought my own plane ticket to go to the States. Uh, Frank Warren at the time didn't want me to have that fight. I booked the fight after Kessler. I, I knew he was in that room. And basically, when he said that, I wasn't offended. I was like, yes, the fight's going to get made. Right. I, he knew what he was going, he knew what he was saying. And you know, what can I say? The fight went ahead. It was a messy fight. He tried to survive yeah, after yeah. four or five rounds holding yeah. and this and that. But listen, I remember like he, he didn't, he tried the mind games. They didn't work with me. I'm very, very strong mentally. Uh, I've been boxing for 27 years. So words are cheap. And I, you know, he could see it in my eyes that he, he, he couldn't get to me. No way. You know, he couldn't get to me, man. You know, he, he, he couldn't get to me. So. That's what's happened, but you know what? I've, I've seen Hopkins a couple of times afterwards. He's had the utmost respect for me. We've had private conversations. He said some nice things, man. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was one a great fight. And the thing is, you're right what you're saying. I don't think I got the respect I deserved after yeah. that win, considering Hopkins went on and won the world title as a 50 year old, you know, and beat Kenny Pavlik, you know, Antonio Tava. 
you know, he, he you know, he beat them guys well. So I think that has to be one of the greatest wins um, of, my, of, my, of my career, especially going to Vegas, you know, going to America for the first time outside my comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, I, I loved it. You know, it was, it, was a, it was a great experience, especially when I got the win. And, and um, I was wondering, um, because I saw, the, I saw your, the great uh, documentary from you and uh, uh, your father and all the, all the fights. Uh, you mentioned your hands, your, your hands uh, problems, like during your the, your career. But you took quite a big, big risk when you took the Roy, Roy Jones fight because um, I know your. I, I mean, in the interview you said that uh, the flame was uh, there was no flame anymore, and then you took such such a big fight. Why why did you choose Roy Jones? Because you're a champion, you could choose anyone. Yeah, I don't know, Roy Jones, you know, I wanted, it's all about legacy for me, yeah. not just about money, and it was about, you know, Roy Jones was one of the best fighters of all time, um, I wanted to fight at Madison Square Garden, which is like the mecca of boxing, yeah. you know, so to finish off my last two fights, and not just be one legend, but two legends, was um, was it was, 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 was great, you know, I, I enjoyed the fight, as you can see, I'm dropping my hands, and I, I, I didn't plan that, it just something has come, <laughs> it's just something that came to me, right? And uh, I was just, except for the first round, of course, when I got put down, but except the rest of the fight, I was having fun. I was just, I knew it was my last fight. I knew, you know, I spoke with my dad and, you know, it's like I was been boxing, I was 36 at the time, so I've been boxing since the age of eight. And I'd done everything, you know. The only thing was missing was going to America. I, did, I went to Vegas. And uh, I wanted to fight Madison Square Garden, and what a great way to finish against, wow, like I said, great way to Roy Jones him. Jr. Man, you know, it's just uh, you schooled him. You schooled Jeff. You you schooled Jeff Lacey. You schooled um, Roy Jones. I was shocked what you did to Jeff Lacey. Seriously. Yeah, I was a great. That's my probably my favorite wins. Man. Oh. Yeah, and uh, is there anyone else there in in the middleweight, the super middleweight? You had thought, wow, I heard, I, I I wish I wish I had a fight with him. Um, no, I think I, I beat all the best I could have beat, you know, at the time. You know, I, I unified the titles after Lacey, the only person. It was only me, and and Kessler. We were way above everybody yeah. else at the time. You know, he was the only one that could dispute being the best so to fight him in my national stadium in front of 53,000 people or whatever it was you don't get bigger than that you know and I, I couldn't make the weight I was super middleweight for, for 14 years I killed myself making the weight yeah. uh, losing 36 pounds a fight in 15 weeks man there's a lot of weight you know we're talking 28 kilos you know 28 kilos a lot of weight wow so there's only two things to do and I was go fight in America get the respect of you know right thing and just for myself and you know, step up in weight and, and like heavyweight. So, like I said, to get the ring magazine title off um, Bernard Hopkins, I think was was ranked maybe number in the top three pound for pound fighters in the world at that time. Yeah. And then Roy Jones, you know, where else to do, to do, you know? And and like you said, you're right. I I was injured all the time. My hands were getting worse, and you got you got to think because boxing is very unforgiving, you know. Sure. You got one fight too much, and I thought. That's my time. I just felt, you know, in my heart and I, you know, just believed that was my time, you I know. So much respect for that because I know that uh, to retire for something you really love and it, it, it takes uh, maybe a year or two years before, you know, you think, oh, maybe I should stop, maybe I should stop. And that's, I have so much respect for that because first of all, you, 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 um, You had you had all the titles, so a lot of fighters wanted really to fight you. Probably promoters are offering you a lot of money, and you still can say uh, no, it's enough. And I have a lot of respect for that. But um, uh, last question: Is uh, are there not promoters still to today? Find out uh, maybe you can come back. Maybe you do want a comeback. I mean, look no, at the that. That's that's stop. I think um, you know. The good thing is, you know, people still talk about your fights and that shows that you've left a legacy in boxing when, you know, like last week, I think it was, no, a few weeks ago, I think it was 15 years since the Jeff Lacey fight, man. It's like, wow, 
time goes so quick and people still watch that fight and that then you know you've done something good is when people still speak about you oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. many years afterwards and talk about fights you fought and they still watch them fights now you know so I was happy and content in finishing when I did. Um, and yeah, you know, people say, come on, Joe, you can come back. Yeah. But listen, man, I'm, I'm going to be 50 next year, you know? So I, I, I'm yeah. done. I still like to train. We still have the boxing gym where me and my father train. My two sons, uh, Connor and Joe, yeah, they're boxing yeah. trainers now. So in keeping the sport, maybe I'll get involved in training and managing one day. But at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm cool. Enjoying life. You're right. You're right. Um, I really want to thank you for your time. Um, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, are you, I'm, 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 it's an honor. Um, thank you, Hassan. And uh, I hope to meet you again. And uh, thank you, brother. Yeah, God bless you and your family and stay safe, my brother. Yeah, God bless you too, buddy. It's great to chat again. Thank you, Catch you I, will soon, send, man. I will send you a picture uh, for the last time we met. Yeah, know? yeah, definitely, bro. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. Albert wasn't drunk. Thank you. No, 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 he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. God bless, man. God bless you, brother. Bye-bye, bro. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.